Hello, curious people. So, one thing I'm crazy interested in is ancient human history. When I learn about the different discoveries of prehistoric humans, I love to imagine their experiences. From the individual humans who encountered Neanderthals or hunted mammoths, to the artists who paint on the walls of caves, I am endlessly interested. One fascinating aspect to ancient human experience that has recently taken residence in my mind is their interactions with extinct species. Modern humans have been wandering this planet for about 300,000 years, and in that time, the vast majority of the planet's large animals have gone extinct. We've walked this planet with massive, fearsome bears, saber-toothed cats, giant sloths, and woolly rhinos. What were their experiences like? What does science know about these interactions? Are we the reason that none of these giant animals exist today? As we made our way out of Africa at some point around 150,000 years ago, we first would have encountered species that are for the most part still around today, including lions, hyenas, hippos, elephants, and crocodiles. Once we left Africa and began traveling through Eurasia, the experiences become less recognizable. 12-ton mammoths, powerful cave lions and cave bears, and two-ton woolly rhinos were undoubtedly part of their lives, as is depicted in numerous cave paintings across the continent. In addition to these massive animals, our ancestors would have encountered other human species, such as Neanderthals and Denisovans. And although we have very little by the way of fossil evidence of these interactions, we have evidence that blows my mind even more. Genetics passed down from Neanderthals and Denisovans that exist in human populations today, with Europeans and Asians carrying around 2% Neanderthal DNA, and populations in Asia, New Zealand, and other Pacific islands carrying a considerable portion of Denisovan DNA. Some of the most compelling archaeological sites in Europe that lend insight into these incredible interactions are Rofignac Cave and Chauvet Cave, which are both in France. Chauvet Cave in southeastern France is one of the most well-preserved examples of upper Paleolithic life on the planet. With cave paintings dating to around 35,000 years old, it is home to the oldest art ever. And a particular set of footprints in the cave are the oldest human footprints that we have ever successfully dated. Since the cave's last period of human inhabitants around 27,000 years ago, it has been sealed off by rocks and debris from a landslide, which has helped to preserve the incredibly detailed and artistic representations of the most awe-inspiring animals that these people encountered. As opposed to most other cave paintings from ancient humans, this prehistoric art gallery contains images of the lost predators of the era. Cave bears, cave lions, and Eurasian lions are prominent throughout the caverns, and these awe-inspiring beasts are depicted in such a way with artfully curving lines that imply movement and grace that I can't help but think that these people revered the predators that they lived amongst. In addition to the predators, there are countless images of woolly rhinos, mammoths, and horses, as well as handprints and other symbols. I can get lost thinking about this place. For thousands of years, humans called that cave home. They raised kids, they laughed and cried, they plotted the course of mammoth herds and stayed cautious of massive and powerful predators that seem more at home today in a fantasy novel. At night around fires, they told and, lucky for us, painted stories, giving us an incredible view into the lives of people that would have been capable of writing JavaScript, but because of their place in the great human story, spent their time hunting mammoths and escaping the astounding predatory power of cave lions and cave bears. Ruffignac Cave in central France is a relatively newer cave system filled with images of mammoths, woolly rhinos, bison, horses, ibex, and a single cave bear. These drawings were made at some point around 13,000 years ago and even include the drawings made by the fingers of children as young as three years old. I like to imagine a family making their living space theirs, whereas we might buy posters and paintings, these people depicted their lives, the important creatures to their survival and mythology on the walls of their home. And while the parents depicted their lives and desires, the kids drew playful swirls that are today known in archaeological contexts as finger flutings. 
The evidence of these children having contributed to these displays makes me smile and think that not too much has changed, as I'm sure we've all heard of or had an experience with an artistic toddler who takes to the walls and furniture to display their creativity. Whose idea was this? When humans reached Australia about 50,000 years ago, they would have reached a land that was unlike any other on the planet. Filled with incredibly massive flightless birds, 250-pound marsupial lions, terrifyingly huge and fast terrestrial crocodiles, and kangaroos so massive that they couldn't hop. Cave paintings in northern Australia depict images of marsupial lions, giant kangaroos, and the 6,000-pound marsupial diprotodon. In addition to these cave paintings, a particular site called Cuddy Springs in southeastern Australia contains the bones of many of the region's megafauna, along with evidence of human habitation and hunting. These findings at Cuddy Springs are the best representations that we have of Aboriginal Australians hunting extinct megafauna, although the direct relationship between the stone tools and the megafauna bones has been questioned in recent years. At some point between 35 and 25,000 years ago, human populations in East Asia crossed the Bering Land Bridge into North America. And as Charles Darwin said, it is impossible to reflect on the state of the American continent without astonishment. Formerly, it must have swarmed with great monsters, and now we find mere pygmies compared with the antecedent allied races. This is meant to say that the Americas were once home to a vast array of long forgotten giants. As the Paleo-Indians traversed and inhabited the Americas, they would have encountered terrifying predators worthy of their places in common lore, including the dire wolf, which, despite its name, wasn't really a wolf, but rather an example of convergent evolution, Smilodons and Homotherium, or saber-toothed cats and scimitar cats, which both are large felid predators and they have similar characteristics, mainly their long canine teeth, but again, this is just an example of convergent evolution, as the two species are about as genetically similar as your house cat is to a tiger. Other predators that they would have had to have encountered and feared are the long-lost American lions and American cheetahs, and certainly the most fearful of all of these extinct beasts, the largest predatory mammal to have ever existed in the Americas, the short-faced bear. In addition to these incredible predators, these early Americans encountered, tracked, and hunted herbivores such as mastodons and mammoths, giant sloths, huge armadillos called the glyptodon, and even woolly rhinos. We can find insight into the interactions between these first Americans and the Pleistocene megafauna in Native American lore. A tradition of the Osage peoples of the Midwest tells a story of an epic battle between mammoths and mastodons. The Cayuse people of the Pacific Northwest have a dance ritual that tells a story of mammoths, and most Pacific Northwest cultures have stories of thunderbirds interacting with humans in both positive and negative ways. The most compelling archaeological sites that lend insight into early indigenous life in America are the Clovis sites, the White Sands Fossil Footprints, and the La Brea Tar Pits. At the Clovis sites in New Mexico, we see the first evidence of organized human hunting in North America, dating back to around 20,000 years ago, with spear points and stone scrapers mixed alongside the bones of mammoths and mastodons. One fossil at the site bears obvious evidence of the hunting of megafauna by way of a mastodon bone impaled by an atlatl point. The White Sands area in New Mexico is possibly the most interesting look into Paleolithic life in America, as 20,000 years ago, the area, instead of being a desert as we know today, was lush and forested with massive lakes and streams. This utopic region was home to most of the continent's megafauna, including direwolves, smilodons, Colombian mammoths, giant ground sloths, giant armadillos, and humans. What makes this area incredibly interesting are the footprints. These animals left their tracks in the muddy shores of an ancient extinct lake, with the mud and clay leaving traces of the shape, size, and direction of travel. The addition of human footprints in this region is what makes this place truly incredible, as some of the human footprints directly follow megafauna prints, with one set of giant ground sloth prints marked with human tracks inside each sloth track. 
The stalking continues for dozens of steps until the sloth tracks circle around and the sloth seems to rear up on its hind legs, signifying the start of an incredible ancient hunting battle. The idea of a group of modern humans tracking an 8,000 pound sloth with the intent of coming home with dinner just blows my mind. It's just incredibly fascinating. Other human footprints at White Sands appear to show women and children carrying seeds and pollen, with the adult prints going in straight lines and the smaller child prints meandering back and forth as we know children are wont to do. This appears to suggest a scene of mothers or big sisters bringing the kids out on a trip to forage for seeds and edible plants. As an uncle who has taken his nieces and nephew out to pick apples, this scenario makes me smile and wonder what the children did when they ran across a bug or a frog. The La Brea Tar Pits is another treasure trove of evidence into the lives of Pleistocene creatures in North America, as crude oil seeps from the ground in that area, creating a sticky pit of oil and asphalt. This tarry pit is understandably the source of demise for many a curious wandering creature, and over the thousands of years of its existence, it has acquired the bones of Smilodons, Homotherium, Mammoths, Sloths, and one human, a lady called the Labrea Woman, who found her unfortunate fate in the pits about 10,000 years ago. The most thought-provoking aspect of this trove of bones are the markings found on some of the bones that indicate butchering by humans, including saber-toothed cat and mammoth bones that appear to have been butchered. These findings are not entirely clear or without descent, but at the very least they show a cohabitation of the area by extinct Pleistocene megafauna and ancient Paleo-Indians. So the question as to whether ancient humans interacted with these ancient beasts is clear. They most definitely did. The question of whether humans were the cause of the demise, however, is less clear. And as is true with most things in science and biology, it's not black and white at all. We most definitely played a part in the extinction of the megafauna on almost every bit of habitable land on this planet. The chronology makes that very clear, showing an almost immediate decline or elimination of megafauna fossils after human inhabitants of those lands. We cannot say that humans did this alone, though, as there were certainly other major contributors, including the warming climate, the rising sea levels, and the segmentation of the biomes by the rising seas. So if you were to Google the question of did humans cause the extinction of megafauna, as I did during research for this video, you'll find arguments by the way of research papers going back and forth about the significance of different factors. I think this leads us to conclude only one thing certainly, and that is it was a perfect storm of problems for the world's largest animals.